Welcome to the Digital Journey Podcast. Every successful online business entrepreneur has an incredible story to share about their journey to success. Listen and learn from top digital mavericks and online business insiders as they share their secrets so you can live the lifestyle you deserve. Your pilots for today's journey, Rob Fortney and Nick Nimmin. Welcome aboard, passengers. The Digital Journey begins now. Welcome to the Digital Journey Podcast, navigating your online business voyage. I'm Rob Fortney from the Amazon Gorillas and my partner, Nick Nimmin. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Rob. I'm uh, excited to be back in Thailand. I took a, a few weeks off, went back to the States, and I'm excited to uh, be back here, be back on the show, and uh, to, just excited to get it rolling today. Me too. If this is your first time listening, thanks for coming. And if you're returning, nice to see you again. The Digital Journey podcast is produced every week for your enjoyment. Feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or subscribe below. And if you want to see our handsome faces, you can watch the video version of the podcast on our website, digitaljourneypodcast.com. So today's show, we have Yannick from uh, the Netherlands, and uh, he's going to be talking about how he developed an e-commerce drop shipping store that does almost $175,000 a month. Yannick's going to share with you how he created that and some of his inside tips and secrets, as well as how his hard work and tenacity has paid off. Before we get into that, I want to let you know that the Digital Journey podcast is brought to you by our friends at Empire Flippers. Empire Flippers is the number one curated marketplace for buying and selling established, profitable online businesses. Visit their website at empireflippers.com and see what businesses are for sale. And if you already own a business, there's a great place on their website where you can get your business evaluated and see how much it's worth. Let's get this journey started. Welcome, Yannick. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great, Rob. Well, we're glad to have you. At first, I would like to thank you guys for having me over. Uh, I think you're doing a good thing. And uh, yeah. Well, thanks for Let's coming on. We appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate thanks it. Thanks for thank coming you. on short notice. We appreciate that. So I guess how the best place to start is, is what's your backstory before you started your journey to become a successful online entrepreneur? And like what industry or types of business were you in prior to starting online? Exactly. Well, the thing is, roughly a year ago, I started as, a, as an engineer working on a ship. Um, I did, went to university, but I feel myself more as a practical guy. Right. So I wanted to work more, more with my hands whilst applying the knowledge that I learned in school. Okay. Uh, hence, I uh, started working as an engineer on a ship. But throughout the job, I just noticed that it wasn't like for me. I just had always had like this feeling deep down that I could do more. Like there was more potential inside of me. At least right. I had this feeling. So I said like, okay, I'm just gonna dive deep and I'm just gonna dip out and just become an entrepreneur. And apparently that was a good choice and you're, and you're following your gut was the right thing to do, right? Yeah. Definitely. Because well, here you are a year later. And for what he's done in a year, it's pretty incredible. So Absolutely, I'm, absolutely. And, and, and since you were working on a ship, um, did you have any prior business background um, before becoming an entrepreneur? Okay, so basically I was like the guy that didn't knew anything about business whatsoever. Like I had friends that were killing it in business and still are. But I didn't know anything. I didn't even know how WordPress works. That's just to just get back at the digital part. So I, I just had to start from scratch. Wow. That's, that's impressive. Incredible. That is. That's and, and, super and, and, impressive. And getting the results that you have in a year. Yeah, fantastic job. Yeah, hats, yeah, yeah. hats off to you for sure. Um, because now you're doing drop shipping, right? That, that's your main bread and butter. Um, what made you decide to get into that? Because, you know, as we all know, there's a gazillion options of things that you can do definitely, to make money online. What, what is it that, that, that led you towards uh, the drop shipping business? Okay, that's kind of a funny story. Um, roughly a year ago in August, I went to uh, Thailand for the first time and I met this American guy. He was a bit obnoxious and out there. Typical American. Yeah, typical American from San Francisco. <laughs> And I met this person and he was like, yeah, I'm just making money online. I'm 23 years old. And he said, you know, today I just made two grand. I was like, wow, that's like, I know my friends are making money, but I never heard like these stories. So they go, what, what, are you, what exactly are you doing? He's like, yeah, I'm in e-commerce. I said, oh, interesting. Like, like, how does it work? And he said something about drop shipping. And after that, it always stayed in the back of my mind. Like after the trip to Thailand, I returned to work and I was like, okay. I'm just really going to try this. So then I, after my job, I just said, okay, I'm, I'm going to hit this guy up again. 
and I asked them about, okay, how, how do you do this and how did you get into it, this? Because, no, I'm just going to dive in the deep and I'm just going to take right. the decision and do it. So I, basically I asked him what were the persons that he followed whenever he started out or at least contributed to his success. Excellent. Now, now who are those people? Because the, the information that he shared with you as far as the people that were the right people to, to, to follow. Yeah, you know, exactly. That, that exactly. apparently opened the right doors for you as far as your, your knowledge of the dropshipping businesses. Yeah, concerned. exactly. Who, exactly. Are, who are some of those people? Well, I asked him about it and he told me, okay, you got to check this course of this guy called Justin Sinner. Okay. And it's like a step-by-step -step process how to set up a store. Nice. Because like I said, I didn't know anything about business, anything about online business whatsoever, even e-commerce, because I'm an engineer. Right. You know, numbers make me happy, but marketing, I didn't know anything about that. So the thing is like, I just needed this step-by-step -step process. So I just started with the course, the course of Justin Senior, and gradually from there, I just moved into, uh, yeah, let's say I mingled in with the community. Nice. Nice. So the community itself has been a bit a big educator. Yeah, well. most definitely. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I, I recently came back like from an e-commerce world summit. Like, just tried to learn as much as possible right now. Nice, nice. So you're also in a good place for that here in Chiang Mai as well, being able to network with other people that are doing, you know, similar yeah, things. Yeah, it's yeah. a hot. I think I think definitely in Asia, like there are a lot of people doing e-commerce right now. A lot of people. So y if you know them, it definitely opens a couple of new doors. Sure, sure. So what was your biggest hurdle in getting started um, that helped you make that big jump? Because at some point you had to go to work and say, hey, I'm out of here. I'm not working anymore. And uh, to get rid of all that security. Okay, so the, here's the thing. Um, I think this is something everybody co copes with uh -huh. whenever starting out with something. And that is that you literally don't know anything about it whatsoever. Right. When I was young, I used to drum. And one thing my teacher always told me is that the good foundation is very, very important. It's like the key towards, let's say, success. Because if you learn something, uh, let's say, let's say you, you implement doing things with the wrong basis, then eventually you're, you, it's going to be so hard to relearn the things or the faults that you learned at the beginning. Right. Great tip. Yeah, great advice. So that's that's why I want just wanted to have somebody that got results because because basically this is what I do right now. I just listen to people that have the results. Right. And I just whenever starting out, I just wanted to listen to people that have the results or people that got the results due to a person or at least due to a person's influence. Right. Because then you could repeat it, right? I mean, yeah, definitely. Right, because you could copy ba ba their format and basically modeling. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, isn't that, I mean, I guess that's kind of what engineering is, isn't it, right? I mean, you know a model, you know this is the way yeah. something works, and you follow it. and you Reverse engineer it, I guess. Definitely. That's kind of what reverse engineer yeah. yeah, That's nice. right. Yeah. Nice. Did you, have any, did you have any big setbacks along the way? Like, you know, like when you first got, when you first got started, you know, you're, you're, list, you're going through the course, you're getting everything set up, you're, you know, you're working through the process, yeah, and, and yeah. things are starting to go. Did you have any, did you have any big set, setbacks in actually getting started? Yeah, definitely, definitely. There were like many because think about it, like you having zero knowledge about any, about this whole industry whatsoever, you are left with a sum of capital and that's like the room that you have to play with. And sure. along the way, of course, like uh, time is somewhat uh, endless as opposed to money. Right, right, absolutely. Because we can all waste, let's say, two, three months but not everybody is possible to, uh, or at least capable of wasting two grand, four grand, 10 grand, sure. 100 grand. That, that, that's all relative. Sure. So uh, what, what were some of those hangups that you had? Like what, what are some of the problems that you faced? Well, I think the biggest thing was that I needed to change my mindset. I was like really afraid to lose money. Like every dollar I spent was like a loss for me. I was like, if it didn't get returned, I was like, oh, okay, right. this is, eventually gonna result in me having no money and having to go back to my job, which I didn't want to. And I, and I think that was like the biggest thing. I was like so uh, frightened, or I, I wouldn't say frightened, yeah, let's say cautious about losing money. And if I did, then that would hurt me. And I would be like, okay, I need to, it's, it's, it's like penny picking, you know? You, you're like super cautious where you're spending your money at. Because basically, like in February, when I started out, I had like 10 grand in the bank went to Ukraine, 
And that's where all my whole entrepreneurial journey started. So I just took the big leap. I said, okay, I'm going to leave from my current uh, environment. I'm just going to go into something new, completely new. So I won't be bothered with things that I am bothered with right now. You know, there were no friends calling me. There was no uh, mandatory visits to, uh, to my family. No, not saying it's bad or anything right. whatsoever. Sure, sure. But that's basically what I did. And you had to make that commitment. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that, along that way, there's so many mental battles you're fighting. Like, right. And this is, this is something you normally don't, people normally don't talk about. But I think that's like the biggest thing. I think everybody can make it in online entrepreneurship. But you first have to be able to conquer your own mind and like the difficulties you cope with. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, one second, yeah, Nick. I, I want to get back to because we talked about you quitting your job we didn't get into to actually like what was the day you went in and made that choice to go in and quit your job like and because i think that's that part of that mindset because you were come overcoming those things that you were just talking about so yeah, like, yeah. go back to that day or the, the, the that decision that you were like okay all right here's where i'm at i'm gonna make this choice because i know i've got a plan what how did that day go well my perception from let's say a corporate job Right. It's just it's it's so it's 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 so much built in levels like like the hierarchy is so much of it especially whenever you're working either military or on a ship or at least these these traditional industries are have so much hi hierarchy right and to me it was like I can already do more than I'm doing right now but I'm just being limited due to your function and you just got to wait whenever the opportunity presumes itself to move into to that new function right and that was something that was bothering me a lot and i was like that day i was like okay i don't want this anymore i don't want to like overall super big engines which let's say of course we're doing it together but which which i kind of feel comfortable with or at least i'm getting comfortable with i was like i don't want to do this anymore because i just feel i can grow so much quicker it's like it's like maybe so the corporate life was like putting a break on me i'm like i'm like i want to go here you know right. i want to go here but it's like they're slowing it down due to they will just just a slow process of growth right. so that, that's like the moment i said okay i'm just gonna You're realizing all of that sell my own ship yeah. sure sure yeah that's that's good that's, that's definitely good. good yeah um during the the process also did you um did you have anything that um, as you were growing your business to where, um, did you have any, any events or anything that happened to where you thought, okay, this is it, this, this isn't going to work. And then it ended up turning around or you were able to overcome, you know, that particular thing or anything like that. Did you have any, any, anything that was really in your eyes to where you thought, okay, well, I'm probably going to have to close this down or it's just not working out for me or anything. Oh like yeah, that? yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Especially, you know, uh, I think if you're e-commerce, if you're doing drop shipping, then you always need to have this mindset of whenever it doesn't work, you just close it. Because eventually you'll just be spending so much money into something that isn't gonna work. Right. So that was, that was like, I had like numerous times of like investing money, like I was like, I had this ID, I created this store, I created all these products in the store. I was like, okay, this has to work, you know? And like my gut feeling says that this is gonna work. And like you put three, four hundred dollars down the drain, and you're like, okay, it doesn't work. But I think that that has something to do with my engineering background. I'm definitely an analy analytical person. I was like, okay, I just scrap it. You know, just take the feeling away from the business. And that was like numerous of times because before my first, let's say, big drop shipping success. I set up 11 stores, so mm. I did it numbers of times. Sure. So you set up 11 different yeah, stores yeah, before yeah. you actually got something Yeah, that's an important thing to, well, to, to address. I, I, yeah, I think that, that you talk about that mindset, that, that I think, and that's, that's that mindset of getting through that because if yeah. you set up 11, you know, there's so obviously you've had to go through some failure, and, and I think everybody has to go through that failure. I don't think you do anything. Yes, I just had lunch with somebody an hour ago, and, and they were talking about, they, we introduced themselves, so yeah, I was successful and failed, and success and failed, and I think that's all entrepreneurs. I think all entrepreneurs. Yeah, you, you at some point, you kind of get resilient Yes. against these failures. It's like, you know, it's just part of the business, because you know whenever you succeed, what the result is going to be. Let's say, let's say, let, let's talk in numbers. Let's say you have a project which costs roughly 10K, and you have 100K to invest. And you do that 10 times over again. 
Let's say nine times it fails, and at tenth time you set up a business which is a multi-million dollar company. Right. That's like definitely worth it. Yeah. So yeah, I think entrepreneurship just comes with a lot of failures, but yeah. like w- whatever the failure does to you, I think that's the most important thing. It's like your it's, reaction to yeah, it yeah, or yeah. how you deal with failure. Yeah. Are you getting like emotional? Does it bring you down, or do you get like strength from it? Because that that was also one of my things. I was like, I just said. I'm gonna make it work. This this was literally when I was on the plane to Ukraine. I said to myself, I'm gonna make this work no matter what. Even if I have to set up 100 stores, 1,000 stores, I don't care, you know? Because eventually it's gonna work. Hey, 1,000 stores making a dollar a piece is $1,000 a month. You yeah. can live in Thailand or probably the Ukraine, so. <laughs> <laughs> plus, plus, you know, all that you learn over the course of doing that, you know, I think, I think just the fact that you that you left your home country with the commitment of, of you know, with that, mindset again, you know, falling back on the mindset that you left your country with the commitment of saying, okay, not only am I leaving my country and I'm just going all in on this, but I am, I'm just going to do it until I just can't possibly do it anymore so that I can learn how to make it work. So it's not like you're just throwing a bunch of stuff against the wall. It's like you're, you're trial and error, trial, trial and error. That didn't work. Let's try it this way. That didn't work. Let's try it this way. Yeah. But diversify and at least try different approaches. That's, I think the main key because you cannot expect the same method to continuously. If you let's say I tried 100 times and I tried 100 times the same thing and it didn't work, of course it didn't. Sure. Because you tried the same thing over and over right. again. So you, uh, somehow you gotta like differentiate your approach. Indeed, like you say. What are what are some of the things that you uh, that you first tried that didn't work? Well, I think my first big mistake is I saw it as a get rich, get rich quick model. You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna get money quick. You know, it's like the hype is here, which is all going to make money quick. Just going to build this website. Yeah. Next week yeah. I'm driving a Lamborghini. Yeah, yeah. like that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the truth, you know. I was like, well, and I, I think it was a bit naive. Sure. I, th- I think a lot of people go through that because, you know, depending on, on what it is that you're consuming on the Internet or, or whatever, I think a lot of people get that idea they get that impression yeah definitely because you're being bombarded with all these success stories and people saying yeah i made two million in a month or let's say x amount and an x amount six figures seven figures you're like wow i can do this too but like you can but approach it as a business like approach it as a real business and don't try to be a one-man army or at least or approach it as a i want to get rich quick because it's not going to work. Sure, sure. So, so for you, basically, when when you changed your idea of I'm this is going to be like an overnight success story for me. When you changed that idea and you started looking at it as like a, a long term business that you could grow, that's when things started transitioning for you. Yeah. So basically, just to get back to the story of me starting eleven stores at store number eleven, I was like, okay, I'm just deliberately trying to start new stores and like trying to find a golden egg. Hmm, nice. Ah, okay. Clever. Clever. You know, but I was like, this isn't working right now. So I just went back to my first one. I said, okay, I'm that's gonna invest more time in this and I'm gonna try to build a community and stuff. And that's when things picked up for me. So going through 11 of them, then going, I'm gonna go back to the front one and instead of opening more stores, I'm gonna go back and try to make a more quality or add yeah, yeah, something to the definitely, formula because 11 of them didn't work and opening them, wasn't happening, so there's got to be something inside of one of these eleven. Well, that's that's yeah. that's exactly very cool. So, when you were starting, like, how did you get funded? How did you create the money to actually get started doing this? I was just money that I saved. Okay, that's basically it. So, like, what kind of money did you start with? Like, like getting going. Like I said, when I when I moved to Ukraine, I had ten thousand euros in the bank, and that was and just that was play money. living money and everything, start a business everything. money. But the thing is, and it's like a funny thing, I thought Ukraine was a pretty cheap country before I moved there. Yeah, I would have. If you'd asked me before we had that conversation about Ukraine, I would have thought it was. <laughs> so maybe I'd not go there. No, no, no. But I think I paid like 750 euros rent, which is roughly $850. Right. Because I think it's similar to a lot of countries is that you need to get a contract uh, if you want to get long term right. lease and then it's beneficial. Yeah. I was staying on a short term. Mm. So my monthly expenses were roughly at least 1.5K. Right. Plus the distraction you have there. So, right. you know, then and if you're not making any money, well, then you're losing money real quick, real quick. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, so you showed up with ten thousand dollars. You're in the Ukraine. You're having to live, and I call that that burn time. You know, yeah, the burn yeah. time, which is you only have so much. You have all kinds of time, but you only have such amount of time to actually make it happen, or you got to go back and jump back in the hamster wheel <laughs> and go back and sail boats again, right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Um, you know, one of the things that I think most entrepreneurs remember, and, and you'll have to think because you, in that same process, is when you make your first dollar. So, like, when oh. you were doing your stuff, so t- <laughs> like, tell me about that day because exactly the way you just oh. lit up. Yeah, you can every see Every single face. entrepreneur, yeah. when you say, well, tell me about the first dollar because that's that first sign <laughs> when you start that you're like, I mean, I remember doing dances, I, you know, I mean, so tell me about that. I could still read, like, through the messages that I sent to my friends when I made my first dollar online. I was like... I just couldn't sleep anymore. I was just continuously working. I was like so enthusiastic. It's like, wow, because it's like, it's not the dollar that matters, but it's like you're proving yourself that you can make money online. Yeah. Right. At least that what, that's what it was to me. I was like, okay, I can do this. Right. I sold two dollars and sixty-seven cents for my first sale. I saw a Wonder <laughs> Woman cell phone case <laughs> on Facebook. I thought I won the lottery. Yeah, it really felt amazing. Like, like I was like adrenaline going through me. I was like, okay, this is it. You know, this is it. Like, this is it. Yeah. Like suddenly, this whole the million dollars is on its way. <laughs> the get rich quick scheme is gonna happen. I, I, I was already calling the Lamborghini dealer. I say, uh, <laughs> line one up for me. Right. How long did that take you? So like. Okay, you started on this. How long did that yeah, take you to happen? Think, well, like I said, it was like a pretty long learning curve. So for me, it took like one and a half months to get some sales. Yeah, you, you, you talk about this, you know, in this time frame. But let, let's be realistic. We're talking about you build a business inside of a year from $10,000 that's doing $175,000 a month a year. So like, I don't know how quick people think it's gonna happen, but that's really quick. <laughs> and that is, you know, yeah. you're talking about you're doing, uh, you yeah. know, in the next year, you're talking about doing, you know, a million and a half dollars in sales, uh, you know, on a drop shipping store, when you clearly have stated that you've never done it, you've never yeah. had done yeah. a business, <laughs> you've never done anything. So that's exciting. That's yeah, gotta yeah, be yeah. exciting to people out there listening right now because they're sitting in the same place you are. They're working, exactly. they're working at their corporate job. They're unhappy. They're thinking, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? I gotta get out of here, I gotta do something. But your, your story's gotta inspire people, it inspires me to think, man, I had enough guts to go do it. I was an engineer, had no idea about this business, and yeah. you created a million dollar business. And even on yourself, you didn't have the knowledge. So this isn't like you had all this talent that you've been working on. It's not like you were Michael Jordan playing basketball since you were eight, your dad's in the, you know, your dad started building websites in 1972 and he taught you, you know, yeah. he did this with no knowledge. And I think that's one of the exciting things about being online is that if you find the right information, and, and name the guy who did your course, you know, who taught you again, because I think that's an important thing. You said that, let's get him some business. Give him some or, props, yeah. Give him some props, because I'm gonna go look at it. Actually, I'm looking at my new first dropping ship store right now, so, you know, at the end of this, I'm gonna Did you it. mean the guy that I got yeah. the course from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the guy that referred me? No, the guy that's course you got, because that- Oh, I mean, that Justin a, Siener, yeah. Justin Siener, so hey, Justin. Apparently, uh, uh, Justin Apparently has some works. good stuff. Or, yeah, you go, know. Check out, go check out Justin. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, how long did it take you before? Because that that takes care of your your first dollar, right? And the feeling that went behind yeah. your first dollar. Yeah. How long was it until you said, "Okay, I can make this into an actual like long term thing. I'm making like a real income from this, to where I can actually build a lifestyle around the money that I'm making." You know what? I guess well, that number is. I, and sorry to interrupt. I guess that no number worries. is. I think it's important is what that number is to me. That number tends to be around. So that you're not draining your ten thousand yeah, anymore. Yeah. So that real number is. So you're going in the positive. Right. So that yeah. at the end of the month, you don't take away from the ten thousand anymore. Oh, that you yeah. have positive cash flow instead of negative. Yeah, this is this, this kind of interesting question because right now I approach it completely differently. Like I just want to live off ten percent of my earnings right, right yeah, now. Yeah, sure. At least ten percent. Um, but the moment I had that feeling was okay so th- this is how it happened i was like doing maybe 14 dollar a day and 20 dollar a day and then 30 dollar a day and then one day I, I still remember it like it was like the first of april i was just working in a in, in some was it some internet cafe in kiev ukraine 2 a.m i was like okay i'm just continuously working knocking over like flat whites like like it's nothing <laughs> right 
And I'm just suddenly I see like all these sales coming. I was like, oh, holy shit. Like, and then suddenly, like, I think to think back at it, the first of April, I went like from a $20 day to $700 day. Like, Ooh, boom. Nice. I was like, okay, I can do this. That was like the moment when I thought, okay. Okay, because that's this, a real number. This, yeah, yeah. So you know, a $20 this like, day to a seven. Like, and what, okay, so what caused that? I mean, what, what do you think? Is that just, I call it, I mean, is that that momentum? Because I see a lot of, I mean, I, I watched it in, in, my, in my business where, you know, you push and you push and you do those 12-hour, 14-hour days, the 18-hour days, and you work and you work, work. I think that's that build in that, yeah, in that hill, yeah, and then yeah. you fall down it, and that's where that big push. Because my first day, I made money, real money, it was 25000 that's crazy you know? and, and 25,000 profit like that was money that went in my pocket in one day so yeah I, I know what that I know what that feeling is like mine was a little bit bigger but you know and then I didn't make money for six more months but it's okay <laughs> no 25k that, that, right? yeah. that gave me that gave me, enough, that gave me enough to move to Thailand and, and start hanging out and working every day and being around people like you yeah definitely so how long did it take you um, you know, the, the balls are on a little bit. There's starting to be, you know, some money that's coming in on a regular basis. How long did it take you yeah. to where you were making enough income from your from your drop shipping business that you were making enough income that you said, okay, this is enough income that I can live off of this, that I can have a full time living and I can actually do something with, yeah. with what's going on here. Okay, so basically for now I see things a little bit differently. Is uh, I try right now I try to live off ten percent of my profits. I just want most of the cash to go back to the company. Um, but, oh yeah, I kind of remember it. It was like this one day, it was the 1st of April. The 1st of April. Like, prior to that, I was doing like $20, $30, $40 days. And then suddenly I was like in an internet cafe in Ukraine, knocking over flat whites. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was just working there at 2 a.m. And then suddenly like, I just kept getting sales. I was like, whoa. It's like a major breakthrough, and I, that day I closed around on like seven hundred dollars, like nice. from going so on a average. Time, a, a ten times multiplier on that in yeah, one yeah, day, say roughly, roughly ten wow. to twenty. I think that's how I see a lot of people do it. You know what I mean? Like you do this plow, you know, where you push this uh, mile of dirt, and you create your own hill that you push in with your plow, <laughs> yeah. and then you actually climb up your hill, and then you race down it really quickly. I think most people find that. Like, um, my first day was a $25,000 day. I mean, made no go. money and got down to $2,500 <laughs> total left in my, in my bank account and did 25,000. Like I said earlier though, I didn't, I didn't make any more money for six months, but it gave me the time, <laughs> the burn time to be able to keep sure. figuring it out. Yeah. Did, what, what about you in your situation? Did you have anything like that to where you got down to, to a real low level of volume? Because you said before you had um, 10,000 euros that you started with. Yeah, yeah. And you're living exactly. off of this money. You're investing this money into your business. Um, did you have any, any times to where you're thinking, uh-oh, this is going to run out. I'm going to run out of money. This oh, is going to, yeah. you know, this, the doors <laughs> might close soon. Did you have anything like that? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, basically Ukraine was a little bit more expensive than I thought. And I think before like this, this huge breakthrough, I think it was down to 1800 euros in the bank. Mm. And I was already like, you, 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 you kind of feel the urge to make the money because deep down I had like this feeling before I left, I was like, okay, I'm going to make this work. Uh, that, that was like my decision. Like, I don't care what it takes. I'm just going to make this work. Even if it works 16 hours, 18 hours, 20 hours, I don't, I don't mind. Sure, like, whatever it takes. Whatever yeah. it takes. Right. And then I was down to 1,800 euros. So I was like, okay. I'm gonna have to start selling it's pretzels. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 like that. Like, like it, suddenly <laughs> thoughts of a plan B come into your head. You're like, oh, oh, what oh. do I do? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, definitely, definitely, and that, that was like scary. I think that's really scary because. So how how much time would that have given you? Like in, with the lifestyle that you had at that time and yeah. the money that you're investing in your in your business, if if you didn't have that time that you went from a twenty dollar day to a seven hundred dollar day and that new income started coming in, if if you would have if you would have stayed at that twenty dollar a day range with that eighteen hundred euros left, how long would that have given you in the Ukraine before you had to fold it all up? Well, the thing is, like my plan B was. Bank robbery? No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. Armed robbery. Armed robbery. <laughs> In Ukraine. Yes. Hell no. Hell no. Yeah. No, no, no. In Thailand either. I cannot <laughs> go to Thai jail or Ukraine jail. Right. Either one cannot yeah. be good. No, 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 no. The thing is, like, I was like, okay, 
I'm so in on this, and even if it wouldn't happen, I would just sell for another three months and try again. Mm. Like I think I think that's like a big thing for being an entrepreneur. Right. Like entrepreneurship just copes with not giving up, and even if you're on a low or if a bad thing happens, then you just pick yourself up and you try again. Yeah, if I because uh, I, I I had got a resume together, and I knew that if I went to work and was stuck that I was gonna spend every day every day or every chance I wasn't at that job or any time I was at that job working on my other business yeah. if that's what I had to do to keep you know my business going and, and, and yeah. you know, keep it on track. I think, I think that's like one of the, uh, I think, misconceptions for a lot of people wanting to start business. You know, it's, it's really nice, you hear all the success stories. Let's all be honest, like it's, it, it really, catches your attention if you're like, whoa, I made 250 grand, 400 grand, right. 500 grand. But like the thing they don't talk about is like the emotional part and the stuff that they go through. Yeah. Like, and, and that's something I really want to address. Like doing business really as a learning curve and not actually doing the business itself, but learning how to handle your own yeah. mind because that's eventually gonna be your biggest enemy. Because let's say, let's say if you're, you're if this, voice is always shouting in the back of your mind it's like you need to have a plan b maybe it's not gonna work that's eventually right. gonna let's say slow you down on your learning process because you can't fully um let's say let's say you you can't fully get into the you don't have any business. space yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to to think about what to it is absorb to everything right, yeah right. to absorb all the knowledge because there's always this this voice in the back of your mind saying oh maybe you can't do this, uh, maybe you just need to get a job, uh, this isn't suited for you, or, well, it, maybe you are just unlucky, you know, all these things. And, and, and I think that's really, really, really an important uh, aspect to master doing business. It is, and another, another part of that, you know, that um, since you're talking about the emotional side of being a digital entrepreneur is, yeah, yeah. you know, as, a, as an entrepreneur in general, you know, if you have like a brick and mortar business, you know, you're having to deal with people all the time and you're having to, you know, have face to face conversations and things like that. Rob, you know, with your with your history, you know that. Um, and as in a restaurant business. And uh. when it when it comes to being a digital entrepreneur, in addition to having the the, the fear side of things you got to deal with, yeah. having those demons on your shoulder saying, hey, this might not work or, hey, somebody else is doing it better than you. And why are they getting better results than you and, and dealing with all that stuff? You also have the isolation side yeah. of it because you're sitting yeah. in front of a computer screen more yeah, than you are definitely. interacting with you know with real people in real life so yeah. um i just wanted to mention that too since we were talking about the uh the emotional side so so on that side of things did you did you have any because you went from working like a, a job where you're around a lot of people to sitting in front of a computer screen by yourself in a cafe like how did you deal with that yeah that, that's an interesting question you know um what I mostly do is whenever I have the, these things, I just look at the whole image of what I'm doing right now and just see how grateful I am. Because being an online entrepreneur means that the only investment is either going to be marketing, some software, and your own time. Like, nothing more. You, you don't need to buy f property. You, t you don't need to hold stock, especially not if you're dropshipping. So it's like minimal, minimal risk. And that's like that's like a thing I really like, and it's that's like whenever I look back at it, and, and whenever I see people starting out, and I say, "Oh, you're so fortunate that you right now have this opportunity to do something that's so low risk." Because let's say you would start a brick and mortar business, let's say let's say we start a restaurant or we start I don't know a fulfillment center, then then you're like at least 500k in debt, yeah, and you're probably not going to make any profits for three years, yeah, and then online, and then online, here online you come along. Right? Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. In a year, you know, you're up to 175k in a month. Yeah, so know? so yeah. there's definitely more room for growth, or at least exponential growth, and the risk is so much, so less, like as opposed to brick and mortar. So that that's what I always say to myself when I'm sitting, even when I'm sitting in front of the screen, I'm like, you know, although I'm sometimes at like a hard time, I'm like, I'm so fortunate to be in this situation that I can just build something up and just exponentially grow like crazy without taking so much risk. Right, right, right. Yeah, good, very good. Since you do drop shipping, let's yes. get into that. Like um, for people that, that are listening to this and they're not familiar with what drop shipping is, can you, can you explain to us yes, what drop yes, shipping yes, is? Yes, what, what is the actual 
process that you that you go through um, in your business for dropshipping. Okay. And then as you're doing that, tell us about how much you actually work on your business. Like, give us that <laughs> indication. Because okay, I think yeah, some yeah. people are in the impression that, you know, you work for an hour and a half a week, you know, or you work the four-hour work week. I don't know that anybody's working the four-hour work week, but nah. I want to meet that guy. Uh, I think he's hard to get a hold of, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think because he doesn't answer his calls for sure. <laughs> well, first, first, I'll address the one how much I work. I think you kind of get like the feeling of what kind of person I am. I'm quite intense when I do something, and I'm like an I go all in guy. So I just do whatever it takes. Right. Like just last night, I think. You know, all the stores were closed because right. of the cremation yes. of the mm -hmm. previous king. Um, yeah, it's just real, real, yeah, real emotional day, of course, for the people here. But to me, I was just like, I just need to work and I'm not going to go to sleep before I'm finished. And that's like whatever I do. Like uh, last night, I went back to, f to like 4 a.m. And, you know, that's that, that's like for me, like I think I check out. 14, 16 hour days, like every day. Nice, nice. So, yeah, that, so that shows the reality yeah, yeah, of this yeah. stuff. And, and that's a common theme here on the show too, you know, because like a lot of people will say the same thing to where they say, you know, hey, um, during this part of the show, they'll say that, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, that it's all glamour Snow, and I'm out and glamour. all the time and, you know, all that <laughs> stuff, but, but more time is spent, you know, in front of the, yeah. uh, in front of the computer screen. For uh, sure. I, th I think it's like the same if you see, let's say you see Steph Curry and you see him like playing this golden game from the Golden State Warriors, like like let's say the last, uh, let's say the last NBA Finals, like there's like a reason that these people are having these results, and that's not because they're like the star of the show. No, that's because they're standing alone on the fucking play field and shooting these three pointers nonstop, and that's like I think people sometimes forget, like it's really a lot of hard work. And probably the things you're gonna see is like either two, five, or even less percent. Yeah, absolutely. Makes perfect sense. Do we wanna get into this very important part of the show? Um, just like barbers and, and that use scissors and, uh, and blow dryers and lawyers have law books and mechanics have tools, each week, this is one of our features in the show, each week we like to take a look inside our guest's entrepreneurial toolbox. Yeah. So what's in your toolbox? My entrepreneurial toolbox. Um, yeah. Right now, I try to obtain as much information as is needed to grow my own business. Um, right now, I'm very oriented into the marketing. Hence, I listen to Neil Patel. I like, uh, I'm all, and besides that, I also do a lot of mindset stuff. Um, yeah, it's maybe a toolbox, but I, w I would like to refer to my routine. So things such as, uh, let's say, having a morning routine, doing your affirmations, that's yeah. definitely something I value a lot. So do you have, do you have rituals that you start every morning out with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely. What definitely. are they? What, what, what does your day consist of? Okay, so let's say I kind of switch in between what I do from, let's say, of the sequence, but the things I mostly do is meditation. How long do you do meditation? Let's say 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Affirmations. Gratitude walk. So I just want to be sure that I know where I am and that I'm actually in a very fortunate position right now. Mm. Um, cold shower. Okay. You're a cold shower guy. Yeah, definitely. All right, man. I, I, yeah, I how are you getting a cold shower? Are you talking about yeah. just hopping? Oh, in? Ukraine cold shower. That's yeah. a whole. No, that's different a real level. cold shower. Ukraine cold shower in the winter. Oh. Yeah, here you're looking at a cold shower. I don't even have a cold shower at my house because, like, it's, the the water tank outside heats up, so actually it gets hot like on its own after about five minutes. It's so hot, it's putting hot. Like, gosh, this water got hot. <laughs> no, no. So, so the meditation, um, the cold shower. Affirmations, gratitude walk, and uh, often I just write down my daily goals or I read my daily goals that I uh, wrote down the night before. And that's almost exactly what my, my attention plan is every day. I don't know that I get to it every day, but that's almost exactly if you wrote it out. Now, do you do any exercise? Or are you calling that gratitude walk part of your exercise? Or are you working out or doing anything like yeah, that? Yeah, the thing is like, 
I think everybody at some point during your working day, you kind of reach a uh, limit of saturation. Like, like, let's say you're saturated. You're like, okay, I can't concentrate that good anymore. Um, right now, I try to work with um, Pomodoro technique. Okay, what's Maybe that? Might some of you know it. Uh, which is that you work for uh, for extended amount of time, let's say 50 minutes, and then you take off 10 minutes off. And you oh, just okay. do it like that. Okay, so you're constantly refreshing. Yeah, your brain. no, no, it's, it's more like you you probably whenever you would sit right now and start working, you'll be able to knock out three hours of full work. Right. But after that, you're just Decline, done. You're just done. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like you're sprinting. So right. I, tr I I try to do more of a 10 mile run, or or let's say 10 okay. miles an hour, or eight miles an hour, and just try to go on a consistent pace. Yeah. So that that's what I'm trying right now. And whenever I feel like I'm saturated. Or let's say I'm like done and I can't concentrate anymore. I just go to the gym. That's right. it. Just work out, smash the iron, and then uh, get back at it. Are nice. you reading any blogs or any podcasts that you're listening to? Yeah, right now I'm. I try to like involve myself as much as possible into the community, so the dropshipping community, just because it's it's such a diverse right. uh, and such a continuously changing industry. You know, you're because. Basically, you're like bound by all these different uh, systems, these different systems that have their own algorithm that's consistently changing. And you're like trying to make the best out of it. So, so that, that's why I'm like in these communities, I'm like, I'm like absorbing as much information as possible. Like what are the recent updates are ha that are happening? Might, what, what is this guy approaching to uh, 4X, 10X, 20X his business? Right. Uh, and, and like those things. Okay. So, so mainly right now, I uh, try to consume as much as from the communities. Um, I read, of course. I have like a subscription to Audible, so I just uh, listen to audiobooks and Alenia Patel. Okay. Apart from that, I also listen to the Joe Rogan podcast from Me time too. to time. I'm a big fan. <laughs> yeah. I sit yeah. literally when I'm working. I sit and listen to Joe Rogan. Like I have, a, I usually have a television on that yeah, side yeah. over there, and I just put it on and work. And it's going on because yeah. his podcast is like three hours, three and a half yeah, hours. Like, yeah. Did you see and the it, one with Alex Jones where yes. he's talking oh, about aliens? <laughs> he's talking about aliens and stuff. Oh, yeah. It's just crazy. I was yeah. like, man, he's he's yeah. went off the deep end now. Yeah. Yeah. A bunch Good of guys stuff. sitting around smoking weed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking about aliens. And Joey Diaz is yeah. the most funniest guy ever. <laughs> yeah. I really love podcasts. Like, like that, that's why I like things like this. And that, that's why I like you guys doing this because it's actually just giving something back to the community. Sure. You know? And I think one of the things that our podcast tries to talk about, and it's exactly what you said earlier, is the, the emotions and the feelings. That's why we ask so many feelings questions, because yeah, yeah, that's yeah. really what gets you through this whole thing, is it's the mindset. Because, listen, you can, anybody can learn if you have books in front of you and you know, yeah. you've got a course. Anybody can learn that. But what they can't learn is the tenacity to be able to go to, and that was the biggest advantage I had when I started. <laughs> because in the restaurant and nightclub business, oh, you fail yeah. a lot. I mean, a lot. And when you fail in that business, you lose the 200 grand or 300 grand, and then you still owe the tax guy 50 that you gotta pay back over the next year when you're trying <laughs> to do it. So that ability to be able to fail. So when I was at that $2,500 mark, I still wasn't panicked. Like. I knew that it would work out. I knew that I was building that exactly. thing and I was eventually gonna fall down and I did because I expected it to happen and that's exactly what happened to you. How do you feel that those morning rituals and things set you up? Because I think that's an important thing. We kind of glossed over a little bit, but like you do those things, but how do you think that impacts what you do or your success as a business? Because I think everybody should have those yeah, rituals yeah, yeah, to yeah. get started because it sets yeah. the foundation for your day and what you're going to do. Well, that's the thing. Like You address it exactly as how I would do it. Like You just want the moment you, you're going to sit in front of your computer as an entrepreneur, as an online entrepreneur, you just want to do the things that, that have benefit to your business. You, you just need to have a clear plan. And like that ritual brings you into that plan. Like it just puts my mindset, boom, now I'm gonna work. And it's like no distractions and I'm just gonna do this. Do you make big goals? Like, I mean, so when you're doing that, are you like writing down, I, I call it the magic three. I start out every day <laughs> with three things that I gotta get accomplished. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I take my list, prioritize it, and then the top three things that I gotta get done that way so that at the end of the day, I've got that 80-20 where I got the 20% most important things done. Mm -hmm. If I get to start another three, that's great. 
But if yeah. I don't, I've worked on those, which are the most important things. Do you do something like that with your, like, because you said you, because one of the things, that plan for the day, what you're going to yeah, do, yeah, what do you do during definitely. that period? Is that what you're doing or something similar? I just write a plan of things that are urgent. Okay. And I just knock them off. Okay. And then most of the time, I'm not going to sleep before I finish it. Ah. So, yeah. Nice. Now, as far as software is concerned for um, your dropshipping business, drop yeah. business, do you have any, any particular tools as far as software is are, are concerned? For my particular stores itself? or Yeah, for, for, the, for your stores, like what, like what do you use to run the back end? Or do you have any type of research tools? Uh, yeah, or like definitely, that that definitely. Uh, I think a thing that is commonly, let's say, undervalued for everybody doing e-commerce is getting an email list. So that's like it, the, the thing I value right now the most is one, get an abandoned card sequence. And the second one is just make sure you get a list. And also work like, because that that's a thing I, I always see as a list as well. It's like build a following. Build a following either on Instagram or Facebook with your business because that's a list as well. And convert those followers into emails. That's a big thing or getting them off of the format you're doing because yeah. the email matters the most. Yeah. Now you, you, you just said abandoned cart sequence. Yeah. Can you, can you explain? What okay, so uh, basically, let's say somebody wants to purchase something from your dropshipping or your online web store. And throughout the process of purchasing, he just cancels it. He says, okay, I don't want it anymore. Then he, the sequence uses that information that he filled in because it's built up in such a way that you always put in your personal information at first because that personal information is being used to hit you up later. Okay. This is like fully automated. So, so there's like software where you can already write these letters, which is like a canned letter every time. Right. And you send it to the people. Now, a thing that I'm also doing, and this is very interesting, like I'm, I'm going to give away one golden nugget right now. Okay, like here we go. Yep, here's the nugget one, right here. One golden nugget, which is, I know a lot of people aren't doing this, uh, but I'm doing this. And this is a thing that's, getting more and more popular right now is like abandoned card sequences by means of SMS. So let's say seen it. you cut your 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 the, the purchase funnel and you're two hours later you get an SMS from somebody. Hey, we saw that you uh, didn't complete your purchase. Uh, please go to this link or press here and then the sequence stops. Wow. That's a very valuable. There's thing. a nice. nugget. Take that Power nugget. In. Yeah, that's powerful. So, uh, Yannick, we kind of glossed over it quickly. We got lost in, you know, these great things about our feelings. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But, again, go through the dropshipping business. Explain the dropshipping model yeah. and then where you're going and what your goals are for your dropshipping business. Definitely. Um, yeah, basically, dropshipping is a little bit different from traditional e-commerce. Right. Um, because... As you know, most of the big stores, they all have stock. And the thing, the key thing that dropshipping doesn't have is stock. Like we don't hold stock ourselves. So how it works is let's say you have a supplier here and you are here as a person, let's say the dropshipper, and that's the, the consumer or the, 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 the client or the person that, that's buying the stuff. And basically what you're doing as a dropshipper is you're like the intermediate person. So you don't hold stock and let's say whenever you have a sale, so you, you have your platform where you're selling items and you have contact with your supplier. Whenever the client consumer purchases, he purchases it from you. And as soon as the purchase happens, you just purchase it from the supplier and send it on your behalf to the consumer. Okay. So basically, you you're just an intermediate person. You're the, you're so in a weird guy. way, it's in a weird way, it's kind of like in like a different version of affiliate marketing. Really, you just yeah. have to line up all of the you know the things that you're drop shipping first, and right. then you promote to that, and then they take care of it on the back end. So it's a similar. Yeah, I think similar it comes thing, back I down, like I just said, is it's marketing. So ultimately, yeah. you're the marketing end for somebody else. You create traffic, and we talk sometimes because I'm in the FBA space. Yeah. So the difference I always explain to people is drop shipping. You provide the customers. And in the FBA space, Amazon provides the customers, you provide the product. Hmm, exactly. You, know, you still market on Amazon, obviously, which is super important, but that's the kind of difference between the two of them. That's it, exactly. So where are you going? What's your goals with the business? My goals with the business? Um, yeah, I think dropshipping, e-commerce dropshipping is paired with a lot of peaks 
and nibs. It's like right. Phew, it's like you're riding the wave continuously, and like trying to find a way to make it like a steady growth. Ah, uh, okay. So basically, what I'm doing right now is, and that's actually taking a lot of my time right now. Hence, I'm not investing that much in learning um, certain competences apart from marketing. But I'm just really busy with building a solid team, getting like let's say a company like building a real company you know a real company with people with different departments and everybody is like responsible for certain things so i can just because to some extent like drop shipping does have like a part let's let's say a part of drop shipping is, is luck or, or let's say there's like some products are better than others right. let's keep it like that some products are better than others product selection yeah is everything <laughs> And somehow you have to like automate this whole chunk or at least I don't want to be busy with it because then I cannot scale it because I'll be the bottleneck of the business. Right. I don't want to be the bottleneck of the business. So I'm like looking right now for ways to just delegate this to people to make it a system so I can just hands off and just let it run on its own and just scale it like crazy. How many people do you have working with you, VAs, assistance that kind of stuff right now i'd say around 10 to 20. wow nice yeah, 10 yeah. to 20 and what kind of jobs are they doing like from everything like like we have marketing the people doing the marketing part so let's say physically making the advertisements with people doing like product research customer care um i'm right now in the midst of doing some other stuff like it's 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 really but but this is like the way how I approach it, you know? It's like you can do it all yourself, but this is this is also one thing I learned doing business after a while. Like let's say the first four months, I was like a one man army. I had like one VA, I was like working a lot of hours, but I wasn't really doing the revenue generating tasks, like the big revenue generating tasks. Right. That was like one of my let's say my breakthroughs doing business. And I just said, okay, everything that can be automated, I'm just gonna, or at least delegated to a different person, I'm just gonna do that. So that's basically what I do right now. So I just chunk every department, or let's say every task up in a different department, and just delegate it to, to, to people and find the right people to do that for me. Nice. Fantastic. Nice. Okay, so let me ask you real quick, like now, like this far in your journey, do you feel successful? And if so, or if not, how do you define success personally? In a monetary standpoint, let's say from in any a, standpoint, okay. any standpoint, like how do you like what does success mean to you? Yeah, you like like successful? what I always thought is that money would change me, but I noticed that I'm still the same person, so I'm not that attached to the results I'm having right now in terms of cash. Um, yeah, I just feel like I'm like on the right path. I feel like I'm just starting, you know, like. Let's say that I'm just climbing the mountain, like like the success journey. And the gold mine is like upstairs, like yeah, the real, yeah. the real mine, like the real mine. I wouldn't say gold, or let's say the, the success mine, like like where just everything is what you want to do, like like right. like the bigger goals, you know. Because of course we are in here, we're doing business for money, but there's always a higher purpose. Like right. there's always a higher purpose. So just to get back at your question, I feel that the, I'm somewhat successful, but I'm definitely not there. Definitely not. So, so what will there look, look like to you? Like, like when you when you reach that point and you say, okay, now I've made it. What in your mind? What does that look like to you? Yeah, what I do you think, imagine that? I think like? I think just just to to get back at to the, at this podcast, of course, which is based on business. I'm just gonna address my business goals. Um, I just want to have a sustainable business that well over eight figures. Okay. Like like there that's that's like my 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 big goal and like. Mm-hmm. As soon as I, I would be close to there, I would probably shove, raise the bar even more. Sure. Yeah, one of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm one of these yeah. guys. Like, well, uh, I think anybody who's a business person, you, you think that this is the mountain you get there, and you're like, holy cow, there's like yeah. way more see mountains. see all these mountains back yeah. here. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yes. I missed those. <laughs> right. I couldn't see those until I got up here. <laughs> hey, Yannick, thank you so much for uh, sharing your story today and, and coming in to see us. Um, you've been listening to the Digital Journey Podcast, navigating you through your online business voyage. Um, we'll see you next week. If you've not listened to our previous podcast, you can check them out at our website at the digital journey podcast.com. And we also encourage you to give us some feedback. Um, let us know how you're liking the show. Let us know what you think about um, what it is that, that's going on here on the digital journey podcast. Um, leave a review. 
on iTunes or if you're on YouTube watching this or anywhere else listening to this, leave a review or feel free to send us a message. And if you have a great story that you want to share, you can reach out to Rob at uh, gorillasonline.com at the top of the page or me at nicknimmon.com. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, make sure that you go ahead and smash that subscribe button Down right there. now. That's right. <laughs> and if you are interested in searching for an online business or selling your business, make sure that you go check out Empire Flippers at empireflippers.com. Um, each week, I get an email from Justin, one of the partners at Empire Flippers, and there are literally six to 10 new businesses for sale every single week. Opportunity is waiting for you at empireflippers.com. Hey, thanks again, Yannick, for coming and seeing us. Yeah, thank you very much, Rob, Nick. Yeah, thanks, man. It's been awesome having you on. Yeah. Your, sh- your story is awesome. And, it is. and it, like every time I do one of these shows, like I walk away like energized. And yeah. the truth is, that's why we do this thing because sure. it, it's much beneficial for us as you. Yeah. And we hope that it's beneficial for all you guys out there. Yeah, let's say you're more interested and you want to know a bit more. Um, just hit me up. Either follow me on Instagram, uh, Yannick himself, or f- just pop me a message on Facebook. I'm in the midst of starting my YouTube channel. So you'll hear more about it soon. Fantastic. Awesome. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and it has inspired you. Before I let you go, I want to share some wise words from some other smart entrepreneurs. This is from Steve Jobs. Creativity is just connecting things. When you ask creative people how they did something, they feel a little guilty because they didn't really do it. They just saw something. It seemed obvious to them after a while. That's because they were able to connect the experiences they had and synthesize new things. And that's exactly what you talked about. Definitely. All right. Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. You're listening to the Digital Journey Podcast. The Digital Journey is brought to you by Empire Flippers, the largest marketplace for selling and purchasing online businesses. EmpireFlippers.com. 